today, I'm going to challenge myself to create a FNAF game in less than 24 hours. So, stick to the end to see if I actually did it. Let's start the timer. A game must have three components in order to be considered a game. A main menu where the player can travel through levels, a gameplay area where the actual game takes place, and a final screen where the player is taken whether he won or lost. For now, let's focus on the gameplay. I'm making a FNAF game, so I need a guy stuck in a room trying to survive a certain amount of time while the enemies are trying to approach him. And the basics are done! Yes! Alright, let's give this game a backstory. Your name is James Murray, and you're a restaurant owner. For several years, you try to keep your business going. But since the appearance of another restaurant, Fred Bears, the job gets harder and harder. One day, after a tragic incident, the place closes down. So, one night you decide to sneak into the building and try to steal one of the mascots to use it for your own restaurant in hopes of regaining the customers. <coughs> <coughs> Whew, I'm fine. In terms of the mechanics, I want to keep things simple. Because, despite knowing a little about Click Team Fusion, I always overcomplicate the most basic things when I start programming. I've been doing it since the first day I learned programming in school. And with the fact that I have a time limit, things will get much worse. So, the simple way we go. I believe the original game is an excellent starting point in my game development journey. Therefore, let's try to replicate it. And for the sake of context and an ideal way to get that sweet 8 minute spot, let's present the already obvious mechanics. You will be stuck in the office until 6am with only the doors as a defense. As time passes, the animatronics will get closer. You will need to use the cameras to find them. And here comes the juice. You don't have lights on your doors, so the only way to tell whether they are going to attack is by paying attention to the rooms near your office. Every animatronic will make its way to you. Fredbear will approach from the left, and Spring Bonnie from the right. When they disappear from the cameras near your office, you only have a few seconds to shut the doors. If you succeed, you send them back to the stage, and the cycle repeats until 6 a.m. Canonically, Fred Bears is a small place, which is great for this challenge because five rooms seems to be enough to create this location. For the office, I want to go with a design similar to Bondi's barnyard, where the center of the frame is a corner of the room. In this way, I can have the player pay more attention to the environment by having both doors wide open in the frame. So, see you in a second. Ta-da! Let's see what we've got here. Some monitors and a desk chair to provide that security office vibe. Posters with the animatronics strategically placed to show the player who's coming from where. A cabinet filled with boring documents and maybe... lore? No lore in here, Matt. I'll miss you. And an electrical box that's halfway through the wall, but you can't see it because it's out of frame. So, who cares? And finally, two big buttons for the doors because I was too lazy to model and animate a lever. <laughs> ah. Before I show you the other rooms, let me tell you about Blender Kit. If you've ever tried a 3D software, the chances are you've spent more time looking for textures than actually modeling. At least I did, until I found Blender Kit. Their asset library has everything from models and materials to brushes and add-ons. And for only $84 a year, you can have access to the entire library, which is an amazing deal if you ask me. But if you don't think you'll use it as much as I do, there are a lot of free assets as well. You can simply drag and drop whatever you need in your scene without leaving Blender ever again. You can also upload your models and textures to the site and share them with others. I've been using the add-on for over half a year now, and I have to say that my productivity has increased. A lot of the materials and models you see in the game are from Blender Kit. So, Feel free to try it out through the link in the description for a 10% discount. While the other me tried exercising his selling skills on you, me, the hard worker, finished the rooms. We have a small stage, a dining area, a storage room, and two hallways that lead to the office. What I have to do now is start coding. I managed to set the basics up pretty quickly. Now we can scroll down, open and close the doors, and also use the tablet. But we still have no idea where our enemies are. So let's code the camera system. I haven't rendered all the rooms yet, mainly because I want to go back and improve some things. So I made some placeholders to help me set up the animatronics location. 
When they are overlapping the camera, the animation will change to one where they are in the room. And when they are not overlapping, the animation will change back to an empty room. As for the AI, I set them a counter that will randomly subtract 1 from their value. When the value is lower or equal to 0, another random value will be given, making it hard to predict when they're about to leave the room. He's gone! Not yet. He's gone now! No. Now! God damn! Now I need to add a win slash lose condition. The door has a value between 0 and 2. When the value is 0, the door is open. When the value is 1, the door is closing, and where the value is greater than 1, the door opens again and resets the value to 0, restarting the whole process. With that being said, when they are close to the office and their counter goes lower or equal to 0, they will move behind the office door, starting a new counter. When that new counter reaches 0 and the value of the door is 1, which means the door is closed, they will be sent back to the stage. If the door value is 0, which means that the door is open, they will jump scare you. If you want to know how these things work, I'm giving the source code to all the channel members. If you cancel your subscription after you get the file, that's alright. But if you decide to keep it, I would really appreciate it. It helps a lot. While the other me was trying to convince you to become a member, I made the UI, as well as the main menu screen and the final screen. Everything is working properly so far, but the game feels tedious. So let's search for some sound effects. I managed to find some great sounds, like this drone ambient. If you're wondering where the fan is, or if you can boop Fredbear's nose, or better yet, to check if I changed the Chuck E. Cheese posters, feel free to play the game and find out for yourself. You'll have the link in the description. I think I'll keep working on it, making it a bit more fun and extending it. But this will take time. So until then, you can check out these other videos I made.